for networking online, really the same principles apply as offline. Okay, and when I teach networking sales, I think you guys got a handout with the, my networking tips. Um, the, the biggest rule is it's not kind of what you want to get out of it, it's what you can put into it. So always be thinking first networking when you don't need something is the right thing. You're all young and probably more in a position to take right now than give. But when you meet somebody, thinking about how you can help them. What do they need? Who can you connect them with? And even though you're young, you have things to offer. Um, one of the things you have to offer is your comfort with social media. So, you know, offering to, to do things like you're doing, being the, the tweeter for IBC Chicago, um, that can get you a lot of visibility right now. IBC is an incredible networking group. There's a culture of helping, and this is worldwide. It's almost like, I say, a secret handshake. If you call somebody or email somebody or tweet them and say, I am a fellow IABC member and I need, they will stop what they're doing. And this is, I've been doing it long, long before I was chair. When I was just a, a newbie in IABC too, I, would, I had once um, a client that was needing to do a press conference in Hong Kong. I don't know the first idea where to hold a press conference, how I could find a photographer, all of those little piddly things. I called, actually I sent an email to somebody in, in the Hong Kong chapter and arranged for a, a call. Um, thankfully she spoke English. <laughs> but really, really helpful. Just a couple of years ago, a client that I was working with is a Japanese owned company, but I was working with a European office overnight as things happen with international companies, um, they acquired a company in Romania. And so, you know, we get to the office and it's like, okay, do PR. <laughs> and I'm like, Romania? Anybody? Anybody? Um, I wasn't quite even sure where it was at the time, but uh, I went into the IABC member database and found one member, no chapter there yet, one member, and I emailed and said, I'm an IABC member, I was chair at the time. Um, I didn't say I was chair, <laughs> I just said I'm an IABC member. Could you help, you know, point me to a PR agency there or tell me what reporters to work with? She, within an hour, answered back, gave me a list of the top agencies, a list of the top journalists, um, said she would meet with us the next day when we flew in. Uh, just incredible. So use your IABC connections. Don't waste this valuable opportunity. Uh, jump right in there and ask people for things. Okay. Definitely help. I'll share a few LinkedIn um, basic tips, uh, but it sounds like you guys are all pretty good with it. Um, definitely make sure that your profile is complete. Um, always include a photo, and with all of these, I highly recommend very, very close up smiling face. Doesn't need to be a professional photo, mine is just with my iPhone. Uh, but really close up. And the whole point here, so many people do a far away, it's a snapshot, and they're just this tiny figure. Um, what you want is it to feel like a conversation for people to actually get to feel like they know you. And so they need to see in that little tiny picture as close up of your face as, as possible so that when you're having an exchange, they feel like they're talking with you. Um, so really, really close up, prop it in. Um, make sure that you set your public profile on LinkedIn to full view, if you're actually doing this to get visibility, um, so that they don't have to be linked to you to see your whole profile. If there's nothing there that you need to hide, unless you've got a fake resume on it. <laughs> and most of the recruiters that I know like um, LinkedIn so much because, because it's public, it means that people are lying less than they did on their printed CVs. So, you know, there is that level of transparency there. Um, you can edit the default headline that it gives you, so that you know, if you don't want it to say in your headline that you're a student, it doesn't. You can put whatever it is you want, so you can create that first impression. Um, if you have a name that has more than one spelling, or you have a really tricky name, um, or you've gotten married, or anything like that, you can make it so that people can find you 
by putting those misspellings, alternative spellings, into your summary. So that first bit, the very bottom line, put some common misspellings of my name, or you may find me by, because then LinkedIn won't bring up near misses. So if you're sending with an I and not sending with a Y, and people look for you under the wrong one, they won't find you. But if you put that into your summary, they'll find you. And you put it every way they could possibly misspell it, they will find you no matter what. Okay. Um, use LinkedIn to search for contacts that you already have, either past jobs or other things, and start building out your network that way. And if they've set their profiles so that people they're connected with can see their networks, then look into their contacts and see if there are people that you know from there. That's a, a good way to very quickly build your network. Um, look at contacts and contacts of others you know. And as soon as you meet people in the real world, so like at this conference, you get your business card. Uh, once you're home, go and find them on LinkedIn and send a request to link with them. So we met at the IABC conference. I'd like to link with you here because uh, that's beginning to build your professional network. And they'll be impressed that you did the follow up because um, most professionals aren't good with that stuff in business cards that goes in a drawer, never gets heard or seen from again. So it's, it's a way of reinforcing that you had a conversation with them. Some advanced tips um, asking for recommendations on LinkedIn. So if you've got people that you worked with, a volunteer position with a chapter, or anything like that ask those people to, to give a recommendation there. It's much easier than asking them for a formal letter of recommendation. Almost anybody, if you've actually done something for them or worked with them, will do a LinkedIn recommendation for you. Whereas you know, taking the time to, to write a formal letter of recommendation, they wouldn't. And this is actually more valuable because it's connecting you with them, with their brand as well. <coughs> um, join groups online. So there are, on LinkedIn, there's an IABC group and you can start engaging with people there. Um, participate in group discussions and answer questions or provide value, so start answering this. When people, they'll have questions about social media, you can say, I can help with that. <laughs> um, all kinds of things, start your own discussion, but don't, don't start a separate group. Do it you know, in the places where the professionals are already there and you get some visibility. Many of the groups on LinkedIn also have job postings. And you can also search on LinkedIn for job titles, things that you're interested in by keywords. Um, and you can search company profiles. Has anybody done that? Search the company profile. Uh, it's a really good way, and I do it when I'm just kind of sourcing for a client or whatever, uh, because you can very quickly find people you know if you're already linked to someone who ever worked there. And you search, it'll show up. What you want to convey, what you want to show when you're in those jobs and internships is how hard you're willing to work to, to get into the profession. And so let it show that. Um, and I would say things, emphasize you know, your social media skills and comfort and all of that, because again, kind of older communicators um, aren't quite as savvy. And so even if you're not, you know, a, social media guru, that doesn't matter. You are an inhabitant of the, the whole digital generation. You're really comfortable there. You can, you have the ability to very quickly learn anything in that world. So you don't have to have had experience building campaigns and things like that to figure that out. Um, you can always find best practice and talk to other people about how they did it. So um, use that because right now that's what older people are feeling they don't have. And so they want to hire it. Definitely include your bio. I cannot believe how many people that I you know, click through and there's nothing other than their Twitter handle and maybe a photo or maybe some like avatar icon. Um, and make sure that your bio includes some keywords and, and something personal about you. Um, even though it's called an avatar on Twitter, it's not supposed to be a cartoon. Um, it should be your face. And so, um, and I really hate the logo stuff, unless I'm you know, following them for just the, the corporate feed. Uh, I want people. I want to actually engage with people there. Um, if you've got a LinkedIn profile or a blog or um, even just your online resume somewhere, um, you can put that in the bio place, the link for a website. 
so that somebody can find out more about you there. Um, follow industry experts and look at who they follow, so within the field that you want to work or the community you want to work, um, and see who follows them as well, and you can start building it that way. Start establishing yourself as an expert, and that doesn't have to be that you have a huge amount of expertise, but if you're clued in and seeing what's being written in your field or your area of interest, and you're just sharing the links to those things, you're providing value to people who follow you, and you're branding yourself in that way with this topic. Oh, she knows a lot about fashion, because she's always tweeting fashion industry stuff articles and things like that. They weren't yours. You were just reading them and sharing them. But it's branding you as on top of that field. So it's a really easy way to start building your persona. You do have to use good judgment. Yeah. And there, even though I do sometimes slip up and <laughs> tweet about tequila, um, <laughs> you do have to use good judgment. And what I say, the rule of thumb is if you wouldn't walk into a room full of people that included both strangers and friends and a journalist and your grandmother. You possibly shouldn't do it. But if I could walk in here and say, hey, you got one glass of wine? Yeah, that's okay. Hey, I just had ten glasses of wine? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and, and especially, and, and this goes for whether you're actually connected with a brand or just your own professional positioning, saying negative things can come back to haunt you. And some really good, smart people have made really stupid mistakes. Um, one that stands out was the um, PR agency guy who went to see the client in Memphis um, at FedEx and tweeted about how horrible Memphis is on his way to the meeting with the FedEx team. And of course, you know, they saw it and basically said, we don't want you anymore, bye bye. Retweeting is a way of saying I like you. It's a flattering thing to do. It's, it's saying, I, I either like you or I like the thing you said. Retweet. So do a lot of that. And what I want, when I'm looking at, at somebody's Twitter activity, I want to get it up to about 40-50% of their tweets are some sort of engagement. Either they're talking to people in this conversation or they're retweeting other people's information. A great way to find people to follow is the Twitter list that other people created. So when you follow some of these people who are at this conference, look and see if they've created Twitter lists and see who's on them and follow some of those people. And you can find lists of communication people, social media people, whatever. And it's a great way to very quickly find some that somebody you already trust or know thinks is, is a good person to connect with. Um, follow recruiters, um, follow companies and people within them. So um, I just had my students doing a social media case study and I said one of the things they have to do, it couldn't be just um, things they could get by Googling it, they needed to interview somebody in social media within the company they chose. And they said, how? How do we find them? Like, <laughs> okay, if you can't find someone who's doing social media for Dell, by looking at a Twitter feed, that <laughs> we really definitely got a problem. So you know, follow them, then tweet them, then look for other people that they're engaging with with their own company, and follow lots of those people. Set them up in a column, and you'll very quickly see what everybody at Dell is tweeting about and who they're connected with. And then you know, you engage with them, say I'm a student, whatever, and and now you've got a relationship. Okay. Um, some general rules and tips, use good judgment about what you post. Don't spam, don't auto-tweet anything, ever. Um, especially don't sign up for one of the services where every time somebody follows you, you tweet them, you DM them back to say thanks for following. As soon as I get those, I unfollow them. So I've just followed somebody, I unfollow them. You're going to be a spammer. Um, WeFollow.com lets people, it's kind of a directory with keywords, so you can sign up for five keywords that you want to be associated with, and if somebody searches on it, they can find you. Um, it, so it's a good way of finding other people, especially professionals um, in certain fields. Um, and also, you can 
for instance, if you already have a pretty good network in LinkedIn, you can very easily um, pull up with a tool, pull up a list of everybody you're connected with in LinkedIn who has also got Twitter ID in their profile, and then follow them or put it into a list in your tweet deck or, or whatever you're using. So it's a great way to kind of cross pollinate. If you haven't yet signed up for Twitter, um, a tip is keep your ID short, as short as possible, because when it gets retweeted, that becomes part of the 140 characters, and so a really long one limits your retweet ability. 